What are the stars? Throughout antiquity, stars were all of the lights in the sky except the sun and moon. Planets were wandering stars, meteorites were shooting stars, comets were hairy stars. Nowadays, stars are often said to be just like the sun. One of the first and probably the most famous person to propose that idea was Giordano Bruno. His reasoning went like this. We know that the sun is inhabited. We know that the stars are inhabited. Therefore, the stars are just like the sun. Well, today the majority of astronomers have accepted Bruno's conclusion, but I wonder how many accept his reasoning. Most astronomers now believe that the sun is a ball of gas with nuclear reactions in the centre. Most, but not all. There is still support for Helmholtz and Kelvin's conclusion that it's a ball of gas which produces heat and light by gravitational contraction. There are some who believe that the sun is a stable form of ball lightning, and nobody has ever been able to prove them wrong. Ball lightning is a phenomenon which has been reported from ancient times to the present, but nobody knows what it is. Emperor Alexander II of Russia was once in a church with his grandson Nicholas when a brilliant lightning ball came in through a window and whirled around before leaving through the main door. There were people in St Pancras Church at Widdicombe in England who were not so lucky. A boisterous ball of lightning barged into the service, smashed parts of the church structure, killed some of the congregation and started a fire. An artist in France was so impressed by one interrupting a meeting that he made an engraving of the incident. One ball of lightning gave passengers on an Eastern Airlines flight from New York to Washington quite a scare. It drifted slowly down the full length of the aircraft. A description by R.C. Jennison appeared in Nature in 1969. Ball lightning appeared quite frequently in submarines during the Second World War, and still nobody knows what they are. There are some serious theories, and a number of observations could well fit with the idea. Ball lightning comes in a range of colours. So do stars. Some of them just fizzle out. The astronomers say that's what most of the stars do. Some of them end with a bang. The astronomers tell us that's what some stars do, too. The best in the field theory about stars is called stellar evolution. Stellar evolution begins with a cloud of gas, mainly hydrogen. For some reason which nobody can figure out, this gas comes together and squashes itself tighter and tighter together until gravity gets hold of it and it starts to shrink into a ball. Interesting idea. Gas usually does exactly the opposite. It spreads out and becomes thinner and thinner. So how does this gas get denser and denser? There is a hypothesis. Some stars, all around the cloud of gas, explode all pretty much at the same time. And the shock waves from the explosions push the gas together till it's dense enough for gravity to take over. What a good idea! But it takes a number of old stars exploding to make one new star. And where did the first stars surrounding the first cloud of gas come from? But let's stop asking embarrassing questions about the beginning of the theory and skip to the rest of the theory. Gravitational contraction goes on until the centre of the star becomes so hot that nuclear reactions begin. Since the cloud is mainly hydrogen, these are fairly cool reactions. Cool as nuclear reactions go, that is. But as the millions of years go by, so much hydrogen is turned to helium that other reactions take over and those reactions are hotter. 
So the original yellow star gets hotter, expands and becomes a red giant, where more and more different elements can get cooked in the nuclear oven. Eventually, as the fuel is burned up, the red giant contracts, gets hotter and becomes blue, and then white, then it gets cooler again and contracts some more. If it's big enough, it explodes, and if it's not, it fades away. This process takes millions, even thousands of millions of years for each step. And how do we know all this? Well, those all hell let loose computer programs, which we met in episode 39, programs which Hoyle and others who followed him spent so much time on, they tell us. There's a general rule for all computer programs, the Giga Rule, which is short for garbage in, garbage out. If the input is no good, the output won't be any good either. And what's the driving force behind the input for those programs? The need to have the stars, and the sun in particular, lasting for millions upon millions of years for the sake of Darwin's evolution. Has anyone seen it happen? Are there records of observations going back millions of years? As we saw in episode 27, Willard Libby wrote in Science, when he introduced the radiocarbon dating method, history extends back only for 5,000 years. In fact, the earliest historical date that has been established with any degree of certainty is about the time of the first dynasty of Egypt, and that's not even 4,000 years ago. Are there any observations of stars changing? Well, we have observations from several very old civilizations. As you might expect, the brightest star in the sky, Sirius, features prominently in the old records. And until AD 150, the description of Sirius matches a red giant. But since AD 1000, it has always been described as a blue star. That change took place in less than 900 years, not millions. And in 1991, Ken Crosswell told us of a very interesting star called FG Sagittae, which was observed to change from a hot blue star with a temperature of 12,000 degrees to a yellow star with a temperature of 5,000 degrees in just 36 years. After that, it turned red, and now it's a variable star which gets periodically dimmer and brighter. Quite a few other stars have been found, which have changed colour in just a few decades. Of course, the programmers have found ways to modify their all-hell-let-loose programmes to enable rapid change. So, we have observations that stars can change drastically in less than a thousand years. We have observations that other stars can change drastically in a decade or two. But the astronomers can't give us any evidence that they change slowly over thousands of millions of years. Well, of course, you can believe in all those millions of years, if you're happy to trust a theory which has to skip over the first impossible steps and which keeps having to be changed to fit new observations. But wouldn't it make sense to trust the timescale of the book about which Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.